Welcome. In this video, I am going to start with the neat objective questions from the chapter excretory products and their elimination. So, we will discuss the questions from level 1 and then later uh, from the level 2 and level 3. So, here I have taken question from the level 1. First question, filtration of blood takes place at, okay, the options PCT, proximal convoluted tubule, DCT that stands for distal convoluted tubule, then collecting ducts and malfeasant body. So here uh, let's understand we know the structure of nephron. So here when we see the structure of the nephron it has uh, the Bowman's capsule and into this Bowman's capsule the afferent arteriole enters and it gets divided to form a lot of capillaries and then it emerges out as the efferent arteriole. So you can see here and here it forms a lot of capillaries and it is called the glomerulus. So this is glomerulus, the network of capillaries. And this one, it's the Bowman's capsule. And here, this part is a red arteriole. And this is efferent arteriole. Now we know the blood flows through the efferent arteriole and then into the glomerulus. And here, okay, due to the pressure, the blood gets filtered through the three layers. So that we have seen already, okay, right the endothelium of the capillary, the basement and then the epithelial layer of the Bowman's cup and the filtrate enters into the capsular space. Okay, and then it flows down into the PCT, the proximal convoluted tubule and then after that it returns into the efferent arteriole. Now here this glomerulus plus the Bowman's capsule together it's called the renal corpuscle or it's also called the Malfigian body also called Malfigian body so with this we understood that the filtration that what we also call ultra filtration takes place in the glow I mean the malfigian body which is a combination of glomerulus and Bowman's capsule so answer is malfigian body the next question is match the following different types of excretory structures and animals are given below uh, match them appropriately and mark the correct answer among uh, those given. So we have here excretory structures or organs, okay, and animals. Now here uh, the protonephridia. So protonephridia are the excretory organs in case of uh, flatworms. So they are excretory organs in case of flatworms. Then nephridia are the excretory organs in earthworms. Then the malfigian tubules. The malfigian tubules are excretory organs in case of uh, insects. So here the cockroach, okay, of course it belongs to the phylum arthropoda and this is a insect. And this have, uh, these cockroaches have excretory organs, the malfigian tubules. Whereas the green glands or antennal glands are seen 
in case of uh, crustaceans so prawn okay uh, belongs to crustacean group that also belongs to arthropoda so these uh, crustaceans and insects both belong to the phylum arthropoda right whereas the earthworm belongs to the phylum annelida whereas the flatworm belongs to the phylum platyhelminthes right so here uh, for green gland or antenal gland we see in case of prawn so here okay so d the green glands that is one okay uh, right then c that is two the malfeasant tubules in cockroach yeah right then b nephridia okay in earthworm yes okay and then uh, the a proto nephridia in case of platform so the answer in this case is a the next question which of the following statements is incorrect so the first statement is the medullary zone of the kidney is divided into few conical masses called medullary pyramids projecting into calyces okay uh, we will see here right so we know the kidney has uh, two regions okay so, so kidney has uh, two regions the outer region is the cortex and inner region is the medulla and in the medulla we see the renal pyramids so these are renal pyramids and these renal pyramids are around 8 to 10 okay inside uh, one kidney and the tip of this renal pyramid will open into the minor calyx so it opens into the minor calyces so here what you see this is the minor calyx and all these minor calyces they open into the major calyx and these major calyces they open into the renal pelvis okay so if you see the order will be from minor calyx to uh, major calyx from major calyx to the renal pelvis okay so this region we know it is cortex and the inner region is medulla and here uh, the portion of the cortex extends into the space between the renal pyramids and that we call it the column of Bertini it's called column of Bertini right so now let's see the medullary zone of the kidney is divided into few conical masses called medullary pyramids yes and they are project into calyces yes so this statement is a okay right statement then inside the kidney the cortical region extends between the medullary pyramids as renal pelvis no okay so you can see that the that region we call it column of Bertini. so the cortex that extends into the space between the renal pyramids uh, or the medullary pyramids we call it column of Bertini, not the renal pelvis so this statement is an incorrect statement then coming to the third option glomerulus along with the Bowman's capsule is called the renal corpuscle yes just now we have seen 
the Bowman's capsule along with the glomerulus is called the renal corpuscle or malphigian body so this statement is also cut statement and coming to the last one the renal corpuscle proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule of the nephron are situated in the cortical region of the kidney yes so here you will see the structure that is uh, the malphigian body and the proximal convoluted tubule and the loop of Hanley uh, dips into the medullary pyramids and then the DCT will be seen again in the cortex. So this statement is also a right statement. So here the B statement is an incorrect statement. So as he asked here incorrect uh, statement the option B will be the answer for this question. The next question which of the following is also known as antidiuretic hormone so the antidiuretic hormone so in short we call it ADH right and here the options oxytocin so oxytocin is a hormone that is uh, released from pituitary gland oxytocin is produced from pituitary gland uh, that is of course the posterior pituitary from posterior pituitary right and this oxytocin is responsible for a child birth is responsible for the child birth and also a release of milk from mammary glands after the child birth so that is the function of oxytocin and coming to the B option uh, the vasopressin so this vasopressin is also called antidiuretic hormone and this is also produced from posterior pituitary gland produced from posterior pituitary gland coming to this adrenaline so adrenaline is a hormone that is okay produced from adrenal medulla of adrenal gland and coming to this uh, calcitonin the calcitonin is also called thyro calcitonin and this hormone is from thyroid gland right so later uh, when we study the last chapter uh, the endocrine system we will again see all these hormones uh, from where they are produced and what their functions will be so here the vasopressin uh, is also called the antidiuretic hormone so the answer is B the next question is renin is secreted by so here uh, the first option is juxta glomerular cells so this juxta glomerular cells also called JG cells now these uh, JG cells are located in the afferent arteriole so here if you see the Bowman's capsule right here is the efferent arteriole
and the efferent arteriole coming out of and here the smooth muscle cells of afferent arteriole these actually these jg cells are specialized smooth muscle cells in afferent arteriole so they are present in the afferent arteriole so right so these are the jg cells the juxta glomerular cells and these jg cells are the one who are going to produce okay the enzyme called renin which is also called angiotensinogenase also called angiotensinogenase and we know here uh, what these uh, porocytes are so here the porocytes are the epithelial cells of the Bowman's capsule and that wrap around the capillaries in the glomeruli like for these uh, porocytes I would like to show you the image so you can see here right so these is the porocytes here okay so how the porocytes wrapped around the capillary so here is the uh, capillary and wrapping around is the porocyte and you can see between that so here these are minute spaces or the caps so which we call them the filtration okay uh, pores or slit pores so through which actually filtration process takes place then uh, coming to this uh, nephridia so the nephridia are excretory organs in uh, right annelids and other organisms and stomach is not at all related as it is uh, the one concerned with the uh, uh, process of digestion so the answer renin is secreted by the juxta glomerular cells the next question find out the correct sequence of events during urea moment pathway so the urea is filtered in the renal corpuscle and we know from each kidney the urea that is collected through the renal pelvis it enters into the ureters and it gets collected in the urinary bladder and through the urethra it is excreted out so we know these are ureters the urinary bladder this is urethra and these are kidneys of course right uh, let's see the first option bladder okay to kidney no uh, and ureter this is in uh, okay so it, the direction of that urea the direction of the urea will be okay uh, it gets filtered in the kidney and from the kidney into the ureters okay from there into the urinary bladder and from the urinary bladder through urethra it flows out so this is the direction of urea movement so we'll see okay the bladder no kidney okay the bladder ureter so it will be from kidney to the ureters here so kidney ureter to the urinary bladder and urethra so the option d will be the right option in this case the next question which is not basic renal function now out of the four options if we see 
the reabsorption is the function of the nephron okay secretion is also a function of the nephron and the d option filtration is also the function of nephron so all these three that is okay reabsorption secretion and filtration so they are all the functions of nephron so that is renal functions and coming to this uh, perfusion so here the perfusion is different so here the meaning of the perfusion is the delivery of blood so this will be the delivery of blood to a capillary bed to a capillary bed in the tissue so delivery of blood to a capillary bed in the tissue uh, is what we call the perfusion uh, or i can say simply the passage of fluid through circulatory or lymphatic system so here this perfusion is not the basic renal function so the answer for this question is b the next question question number 59 volume of urine is regulated by so we know that uh, the aldosterone is a hormone that regulates uh, the urine flow and also the adh that is vasopressin or anti diuretic hormone also plays a role in regulating the volume of uh, urine so if you see here okay the first option is aldosterone okay right the second option aldosterone and testosterone so testosterone doesn't play uh, any role in okay controlling the volume of uh, urine so here the aldosterone is the one that controls a uh, volume of urine and also the adh that is vasopressin so adh which we also call it uh, vasopressin and in the d option they have given both aldosterone and adh so hence we need to take the d option as answer both aldosterone and adh uh, play a role okay in regulating volume of urine the next question which one of the following is not part of a renal pyramid so here the options the collecting ducts loops of henle then peritubular capillaries and convoluted tubules so uh, if you see here we know in the case of kidney the outer layer is the cortex so this is the cortex region and this is the medulla region and we know here in the cortex region you find the bowman's capsule okay and this is the and this is the proximal convoluted tubule right this is the proximal convoluted tubule and then that enters into the medulla and so this will be the henle slope and okay so so here uh, this is the pct and this portion it will be the dct distal convoluted tubule and this is okay henle loop so these will be present I mean Henle slope will be present in the medulla so here uh, this is uh, the medulla which means 
here you will see actually in this way so this is the renal pyramid is the renal pyramid and this is a henley's loop okay so collecting ducts right so here this will open finally into the collecting duct so the collecting ducts will run from the cortex to the medulla and finally it opens at the tip of the renal pyramid so here you will see the minor calyx so this is the minor calyx okay henley slow so you, you see here uh, this is present in the renal pyramid right the collecting ducts you will see in the renal pyramid and we know uh, there is a uh, peritubular uh, capillaries these uh, peritubular capillaries are formed by efferent arterioles formed by efferent arteriole uh, that we will see it on uh, right uh, this uh, PCT DCT and even on especially uh, morally we'll see in case of this Henley slope uh, right I mean mostly we'll see in case of uh, uh, this peritubular capillaries so uh, the Henley slope is present in the renal pyramid the collecting ducts in the renal uh, pyramid the peritubular capillaries in the uh, renal pyramid whereas this convoluted tubules so that is uh, both the PCT and DCT they are not present in the uh, renal pyramid region they are present in the uh, okay uh, cortex region so which one of the following is not part of the renal pyramid so the answer is convoluted tubule so the next question uh, here I have gone back uh, to the question number two as there is a, a slight correction in this which of the following statements is correct so in the in the book it is printed as uh, incorrect so you correct it okay so which of the following statements is correct right not incorrect so the first one ADH prevents the conversion of angiotensinogen in blood to angiotensin so the ADH doesn't have any function in conversion of angiotensinogen in blood to angiotensin so we know this is a vasopressin and helps in uh, reabsorption of water then coming to the second one aldosterone facilitates water reabsorption yes aldosterone helps in facilitating water reabsorption okay then uh, we'll see the next two options so ANF enhances uh, okay sodium reabsorption actually it inhibits sodium reabsorption whereas uh, the renin is an enzyme and it is not okay a vasodilator so renin is a so renin is a enzyme that we call it uh, also as uh, angiotensinogen it's also called angiotensinogen and is an enzyme produced by enzyme produced by JG cells that is juxtaglomerular cells okay so this uh, statement is wrong okay this is also wrong and this is also wrong the only statement that is correct aldosterone facilitates water reabsorption so this statement is right so here uh, I told you make a correction so earlier it was uh, uh, given here as incorrect so remove that okay in and uh, correct that statement so statements so which of the following statements is correct the next question which one of the following statements is correct with respect to kidney function 
regulation. So the first option here, an increase in glomerular blood flow stimulates the formation of angiotensin 2. Uh, it is not a correct statement. So because okay, increase in the glomerular blood flow will not stimulate the JG cells. We know uh, the decrease in glomerular filtration rate that will stimulate it stimulates okay, so that will produce a renin and this renin is uh, going to convert uh, angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 and uh, then later okay by an, another enzyme to angiotensin 2 so when there is an increase in the gfr there will be no production of renin hence there will be no formation of angiotensin 2 then the second option during summer when body loses lots of loses lot of water by evaporation the release of adh is suppressed okay uh, when this in the summer when the body loses lot of water then the release of adh will get stimulated because to absorb uh, water and prevent the loss of water so this statement for that reason is also wrong then when someone drinks a lot of water so when there is a lot of water already available in the body then there is no uh, need to release this adh okay so adh release is suppressed yes there is no need for the adh when the water content is less then okay the adh stimulation i mean uh, release uh, will be taking place so adh release is suppressed when someone drinks a lot of water so this statement is a right statement so exposure to cold temperatures st stimulates adh release no here uh, exposure to the hot climates will stimulate the ADH release to uh, reabsorb the water and conserve the water right so out of uh, all these statements the C option uh, will be the right option the next question which does not help in excretion so if we see here uh, the first option okay the sweat glands we know the sweat glands will help in eliminating some of the excretory wastes and the sweat glands are mainly involved in excreting sodium chloride so the sweat glands eliminate sodium chloride and even small amounts of uh, urea and small amounts of uh, lactic acid so these uh, substances will be released so these are wastes okay the urea lactic acid and sodium chloride are wastes which are released by the sweat glands and coming to the liver the liver uh, which produces the bile and this bile has uh, two components uh, the bile salts and bile pigments so here the bile salts are the one that actually help in emulsification of fats so they help in emulsification of fats whereas uh, the bile pigments uh, right like the bile viridin okay and uh, the bile rubin so these are okay uh, the substances which are of no use and these are the waste materials the bile viridin and bile rubin are wastes and excreted so uh, the liver also helps partially in removal of wastes 
coming to the pancreas the pancreas okay we know it acts both as endocrine and uh, okay uh, helps uh, endocrine that produces hormones and also it produces enzymes that help in uh, digestion of the food so here the pancreas okay here it helps in digestion and also acts as endocrine gland so in this case uh, this will not eliminate any waste materials the pancreas so whereas sweat glands and the liver does so the option is uh, C, uh, the one which will not at all help in excretion. So the correct option is C. Right, next question. Kidneys perform all the functions except. So here, uh, the first one, filtration of blood. Yes, the filtration of blood, okay. Uh, that takes place in the renal corpuscle okay right and uh, uh, that is filtration of blood is performed by the kidneys then regulation of BP is also performed by uh, the kidneys so here we know that uh, when there is a decrease in the glomerular filtration rate uh, it will stimulate the JG cells and when the JG cells get stimulated it produces the enzyme renin and the renin is going to convert okay uh, the angio tensinogen into angio tensin one and this angiotensin one will get converted to angiotensin one will get converted to angiotensin two with the help of an enzyme called ACE angiotensin converting enzyme and we know so this angiotensin two is a vaso constrictor so when it is a vaso constrictor okay it uh, reduces the diameter of the blood vessel and this actually okay uh, results in results in increase in the blood pressure it results in increase in the blood pressure so uh, regulation of bp is also correct so filtration of blood okay so this is also uh, the correct one so this is uh, right this is also right then secretion of antibodies no the secretion of antibodies is only done by one uh, special type of uh, uh, WBC cells called B lymphocytes it's the only B lymphocytes that produce the okay antibodies so secretion of antibodies is by the B lymphocytes right and it is not by the kidney at all then we know the regulation of a pH okay and volume of body fluids is the function of kidneys so this is also a okay uh, correct in uh, function under the functions of kidneys except this that is secretion of antibodies of, done by the B lymphocytes so the correct answer is secretion of antibodies is the correct answer the next question the correct match is let's see the first option the dct secretion of uh, hydrogen and potassium ions so not only the collecting duct the dct also has uh, the function of uh, selective secretion of uh, hydrogen and uh, potassium ions so this statement is a right statement then Henle's loop 
reabsorption of glucose, water and sodium ions. So Henle's loop will not reabsorb okay, these substances. Then coming to the porocytes, they attach to the parietal layer of Bowman's capsule. So if you see in the uh, diagram, Uh, this is how the Bowman's capsule you will see okay and this is the parietal layer it's the parietal layer and inside this is the visceral layer right and uh, here you can see uh, of course uh, the moment the afferent arteriole okay entering into and then it forms here so this is uh, the uh, thickness through which actually the filtration takes place right so the outer parietal and this is the visceral layer so this is the one where actually you will see the presence of uh, okay porocytes not in the parietal layer so the porocytes attach to the parietal layer of Bowman's capsule. So this is also a wrong statement. Then uh, G, uh, I mean JGA rise, that is juxta glomerular apparatus, rise in glomerular blood pressure activates uh, uh, it to release renin. No, and uh, only decrease in the GFR only decrease in the GFR activates the JG cells to produce uh, uh, renin. So already we have seen okay in the previous questions. So hence uh, rise in the glomerular blood pressure does not activate the JG cells to release renin. So uh, this statement is also a wrong statement. So out of all these four statements okay the only uh, statement one is right. So out of here the C option that has only the option one that is one first statement will be the right option. Uh, with this question I will end here uh, the remaining questions we will see in the next session.